The war in Ukraine has led to great tumult internationally and relations between many countries have entered a new phase. In the months before the war broke out and after, many experts have been keenly observing the relations between Russia and China and how the latter has decided to position itself. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin had met before the Winter Olympics, where they had announced an energy deal and strengthening of ties. After the war broke out, China has taken a careful position in light of the various complexities involved. Marco Fernandez of Dongxing News analyzes the position taken by China. Well, first of all, we know we all know um, how much China and Russia has been uh, closer and closer. Uh, in the last years, actually, it's it's, uh, it's ironic that this partnership started to be uh, to sh- be strengthened um, right after 2014, uh, after the coup in Ukraine, which is actually big part of the the problem we have now. So that's the moment where uh, Putin and Xi get uh, close together, and China and Russia, and they start to build this 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 new partner, this new strategic partnership. So this the the first thing. And China, every, every single day, China is it's saying again, uh, the friendship with Russia is rock solid, as they, they, they say. Um, but given that, of course, China is being very cautious. China, all the, the statements from, from Chinese diplomacy right now, and even President Xi Jinping, is always in, in the sense of trying to be neutral, but trying to be in a position where China can mediate uh, some of the uh, negotiations. So if you see the last days, there's intense diplomatic uh, actions by China. Uh, President Xi Jinping met with uh, President Macron from France and, and, and the, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, uh, Olaf Scholz from Germany. Uh, right after that, or right before that, uh, Wang Yi, the foreign ministry, he, he spoke with the Ukrainian foreign minister, Kuleba, and the last days, Wang Yi has been talking to uh, Borel, Josep Borel from uh, uh, European Union, has been talking to foreign ministers of Italy and France. So every day you have a different round of, of, of talks by, by China. So China is clearly, and all, of course, always saying that we need a, a peaceful negotiation, we need a peaceful solution, um, the war must stop, but we also have to respect the concerns, uh, the security concerns of Russia. And we also have to respect the sovereignty of Ukraine. So it's actually a very, it's, it's sort of a very uh, a complicated situation for China because of course, the uh, situation in Ukraine uh, uh, for China uh, has something also to do with their own concerns about their sovereignty of their territory that's been attacking by, attacked by by the Western powers in the, in the last year. So it's a very complicated situation, but I think we can say that at the end of the day, as even Joseph Borrell, which is the sort of like a foreign uh, ministry of, of European Union, he said a few days ago, only China can play this role of, of, of being a mediator right now because US can't, uh, European Union can't. And of course, everybody knows that China has a very good relationship with Russia. So at the end of the day, uh, looks like China would be would play a major role in the negotiations, in the, the solutions for this conflict. And this is what we have to wait for the next day. The relationship between China and Russia has been growing stronger for years now, as both countries have identified that each provides elements which the other is in need of. They have also played a complementary role on many issues internationally. What has been the thrust of the Russia-China relationship over the years? Now, actually, this is like a this is a perfect marriage, I would say, because for one side, we know that Russia is a major military power, but also a major uh, energy and and food and and mining power. So, I mean, Russia has huge amounts of natural resources that China needs desperately uh, for its uh, economic development. And for the other side, China has a huge strength, uh, uh, economic, uh, financial, uh, technological strength that Russia also needs. And both together, of course, now have a, diff- uh, uh, a similar or the same uh, enemy, which is 
Western powers, which is US, Europe, and, and, and NATO. And this is not new. So of course, uh, from a geopolitical perspective, this is the, probably the most important partnership of our ages, uh, our age. So, um, so this is the, the, the first thing. But if you go, then if you go to the details to like all the, the economical and trade and partnership, trade, for instance, this year uh, grew almost 40% from one year ago and reached almost 150 billion US dollars. And they, they want to double that uh, in the next three to four years. And of course, uh, one example uh, to sort of illustrate the importance of this partnership is that we know that one of the major issues between Russia and, and NATO lately was this uh, issue with uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, this huge pipeline that's bringing gas from Russia to Germany and Europe. So one of the first measures of, of uh, Europe and Germany was to, uh, against Russia, was to suspend the, uh, the process of, um, uh, uh, what is it called, to, to, the, the process to uh, uh, make work, make the, the, the license and everything for Nord Stream 2 that they were threatening already uh, before the war. And of course, with the, uh, the, the beginning of the war, they just suspended that. Well, a few days right after that, what happened is that uh, uh, Russia signed an agreement, Gazprom, the huge uh, state company, signed an agreement with China to provide uh, to build a huge pipeline, new pipeline uh, to China, which is more or less the same capacity of the Nord Stream 2. So um, this, I think it's a very good example of what probably things that will happen after uh, in the next months and years, which is uh, a strengthening of this economic partnership because Russia will be hit by the sanctions. Of course, we have a lot of economic difficulties. And of course, the China uh, probably will be a, a sort of a safe haven uh, to Russia. The same happened with wheat. Uh, also, a few days ago, also China announced that they are uh, suspending all the restrictions to the import of wheat from, from Russia. Um, but if you go to the partnership, it's, it's I mean, like coal, oil, gas, uh, wheat, and even technology, thinking well, the space program of China, which is now like uh, one of the, the, the biggest in the world, most important, um, Russia and China also been doing a very important partnership. For instance, the next uh, state uh, station, uh, sorry, uh, space station uh, that China is, is, is uh, building now, it will be built together with Russia. And so there's infinite uh, sectors where both are strengthening their relations, uh, both economical, but also geopolitical. And like also in terms of geopolitics, it's important to remember that China and Russia has been built a sort of like a group in the United Nations um, fighting against the unilateral sanctions of US and the, unit, uh, and the positions of the Western powers. This is China, Russia, but also Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, Angola, and many other countries. So, so clearly what's going to happen now with this uh, conflict is that there's a tendency of China and Russia um, getting even closer and even uh, uh, more uh, with us, uh, like a more strength uh, in this partnership that, that ever. Following February 24th, when the war began, there was a barrage of sanctions on Russia. China has been paying close attention to these measures, as it has also been a target of heavy sanctions and economic warfare before, especially during the Trump administration. How is China analyzing these issues and the precedents that it might set? First of all, um, China is being very clear in its position about the sanctions. They are against the sanctions against Russia because, well, basically they say the, the sanctions, first of all, will escalate tensions and this makes negotiations harder. That's the most important thing right now. Second, of course, we'll harm the Russian economy and the people will suffer even more. And China is aware of it because China has been, as you said, targeted sanctions uh, from US in the last years. And, and, and third, and worst of all, it will, um, it will worst the global economy. The, because of course, you have already a problem with the war, as we just said, 
that I mean, Russia and even Ukraine, they are like biggest uh, uh, producer of energy, of food, and case of Russia, fertilizers. Um, so this, of course, will uh, be a huge problem for the global economy. And, and China, of course, is worried about that because it's also going to be a problem in China. So, for instance, some data. Um, we have so far the, uh, the commodity prices since January, the, the, the global price has already increased 26%. According to The Economist, this is the biggest shock of commodity prices since 1973. And of course, the sanctions would just get worse because uh, uh, of that. So uh, some examples, like the wheat. You know that Russia and Ukraine together, they produce 29%, almost one third of the wheat of the planet right now. Um, the prices of the wheat before the war started was already 47% uh more than at the beginning of the year since the war started last week they increased more 30 percent and in case of china adding to that there's a specific situation that the 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 wheat crop this year in china the the so-called the winter crop would probably be or maybe a big chance of being the 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 worst in 20 years because they have uh very heavy rains last year in the moment that you're supposed to uh plant and, and, and now they will suffer for that. So in case of China, I mean, imagine wheat is like one of the staple, the most important staple food in China. So, you, and you go on, and the barley, the corn, um, fertilizers, uh, Russia is the world's biggest port uh, of uh, fertilizer. And the prices already have doubled in the last 18 months, and they will go higher now. The same with oil, same with coal. Of course, you have the problem with the war, but the sanctions are going to be, uh, uh, another factor of increasing prices because you know Russia now many banks of Russia major banks are excluded from SWIFT and so this will make the global payments even harder this takes us to also one of the key issues of our times which is the power of dollar as we know people are using this uh, this um, uh, expression now last, last days this is a sort of like a, a nuclear option to uh, churn a country from the, the SWIFT. So basically, what might happen now, it's also that China and Russia will increase they, uh, their trade in, in rubles and, and yuan. And this is, this is a big, big thing. Uh, and not only China, because uh, other countries also that has to do trade with, with Russia, they also will look for alternatives. So for instance, right now, in case of the, the relation of, of both China and Russia last year, 25% of the trade between these two countries were made without the dollar. And of course, this is a tendency to increase now. Uh, but what we don't know yet, and China don't know yet, this is the, the main worry I think we can see this in, in Chinese media, all the debates, is that what US will do also against China, because um, U.S. is also a warning, threatening actually China, that if China try to circumvent the sanctions against Russia, U.S. will punish China. So this is also one of the big question marks we have right now because nobody knows what U.S. will do um, after, after the end of the war and what the U.S. will do with other countries, including China, who are going to try to create an alternative to uh, the dollar and to the SWIFT. So this is, uh, we have to wait, but at the end of the day, I think the, the biggest problem of all this happening is that, as we know, in every war, the poor will suffer more. The poor will pay the, the biggest price for the, all the conflict and all the sanctions. For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.